Thanks for your interest today in our tutorial video on the Shindo Horizon Fire Lake Waste Oil Furnace with the Triple Watchdog Overheat Safety Switch System. Through research and development, we have been able to improve the fan starting times and start temperatures of the big cooling fan even in cold shops through using a modern snap disc switch that is precisely located on the correct spot just under the silver cover on top of the chamber to start the fan about 90 seconds after the burner fires. This switch also eliminates starting and stopping repeatedly if cold air hits the original silver Shenandoah fan limit control on top. Note, do not eliminate the original silver fan limit controls and be sure to turn your power off before proceeding. Now let's take a look here how we do this triple watchdog system and why we do it. Notice the temperature in the shop is 56 degrees. Here's an original fan limit control that's way too warm and right here is the calibration line. Notice this clock 50 degrees is over here so it should be about in there but it's clear up here at 120. This fan limit control here is way too warm. It should be 56 degrees. This one here is way, way too cold. Here's the calibration line there at that green line. Notice this thing should be up here at 56 degrees. This is 50 degrees. 50 degrees lower is zero. 50 degrees lower yet is 50 below zero. This thing is at 70 below zero. It is way out of town. That will not start the fan at all and that's not good. That's why we have come up with this triple watchdog system. It has a fan failure switch. If the fan never starts, that's the hottest spot of the unit right there. It'll shut it down in the event of a fan failure. This here switch will shut it down in the event of high air temperature and the original fan limit switch will do the same. If you buy a unit from us, you will get this cord here that's not hooked up that's what hooks up the triple watchdog overheat system. It will come with a 90 degree connector and a straight connector depends which way you go into your thing as to which connector you use. They all hook up the same but when you buy the whole heater it will already be hooked up. Here's also the original fan limit control. This should not be on this side because when the unit starts this is the hot spot and the, it will chimney up through the squirrel cage fan here and pulls air in here past the fan limit control down to the far end comes back and chimneys out here the heat will come out here so it pulls cold air past the fan limit control this should always be on the side that has the blank plate and with the horizon you cannot use louvers on both sides these switches will not work properly any way you do it. You have to put louvers just on one side. So you put the fan limit control on the side that's got the blank plate on, which will be the back on this unit here. Okay, remember, we got circuit breaker power coming in here. This one's got a jumper on, so both of these are circuit breaker power. Now, the power comes in, power comes to the overheat switch first, and when this warms up, it sends power back to the red wire to run the fan motor right over here. Don't change any of that. Leave this switch just like it was. This switch will start the fan if you rotate that. If you push the button, it starts the fan. Leave that all like it was. Now remember we had the two red wires. The one red wire with the black tracer gets its power from circuit breaker here and goes down to this switch here and back up and it goes to run the fan motor. Just goes across the terminal strip so that it starts the fan. The simplified version is this here. We're getting power from there and going here to run the fan motor. That's all that red switch does with the red wires with the black tracer. That's the simplified version. Now, let's say in the middle of the night we lost electrical connection and the fan limit control 
turns the fan on, nothing happens because we have electrical connection failure. Now, when this switch here overheats, notice the, the burner lights go out. When it overheats, the burner lights go out. And we also have this watchdog switch system hooked up here. When you disconnect this, the burner lights will also go out. If that switch overheats, it'll shut the burner completely down. The same with this back here. When you just disconnect these wires, the burner needs to die. No more flame after you disconnect the wires. That's very important. Be sure you check that. Now, to hook it up, remember we said we had black wire comes to the fan limit control. It also comes out blue if it's not overheated. Comes back here to the blue. This here blue wire was up here on the terminal strip here going across to send power to the burner. But we took it off of there and we put this special heat shrink connector on here. This should never be taken apart again. It goes from blue which comes from the original silver fan limit control to this heat shrink connector and goes out to the watchdog system blue with a black tracer we have a special sticker we put on there do not take this connection apart again and then our blue wire with a black tracer goes down here and comes to this switch and then it goes to that switch and then it comes back here blue with the black tracer comes back again and this is the one that sends power to go across the terminal strip instead of the original one so we we tie this in series and then it comes out here blue to go down the flex conduit to run the burner now you could you could have a black rubber cord which is going to have a black wire so this could be a blue or a black wire going to the burner doesn't matter the important thing is that you check these switches here make sure the power goes out when you disconnect the switch and you can check it with the flame run the flame should go out also this is the simplified version back here we got circuit breaker power comes to the overheat fan limit control the original silver fan limit control if it's not overheated it comes out here remember it comes back to our heat shrink connector that's where it changes from blue to blue with a black tracer goes through the high air temperature switch underneath the silver cover and then it goes behind the fan to the fan failure switch and it's still blue with a black tracer comes up here to the terminal strip simply goes across the terminal strip and comes out blue or black either one depending which cord you got blue or black goes to run the burner that's all it's to it here's the instructions it tells you how to hook it up if you like instructions you can do it this way we also showed you the simplified version and then we also have a wiring diagram for those of you who like wiring diagrams this should come with your furnace but we're going to put it in the video here so you have that too this is a really good system to make the Shindo Horizon furnace last if you need a chamber, call us. We can help you. If you need a whole furnace, call us. We can help you. We can get you anything you need. CentralOhioHeaters.com. We're from Millersburg, Ohio. Thanks for your interest today.